Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got quite a few interesting things to go over for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC. Unused items that have a little bit more detail about them. We also have some more theories to go over. Loads of stuff to break down and get into today. So if you're excited for the video, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try to hit 500 likes, it really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new for daily Pokemon content. Ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way though, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So starting things off, we're going to be taking a look at these unused items for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So these were originally data mined way back when Scarlet and Violet first came out. They were obviously not found in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's base game, just the actual code. So we thought potentially they could be used for future DLC. This is before we knew about the hidden treasure of Area Zero. But of course, the Teal Mask and Indigo Disc have both been out now, and we still have no sign of these items. Usually, items like this in the data mine just have like some text. And usually when it's like that, it's like, okay, well, maybe they're going to be used. Maybe it's not going to be used. But when it's just text, it, it doesn't really, like, we don't really have an idea. When they have official, like, images like this, though, they are very much likely going to be used in the game. But obviously, as we know, these are not used. Um, so we have Centro here saying, these two items were unused in the base game remain unused. According to the old leakers, there's a lot of unfinished things, including these two items and the PK Hex-like feature. So, yeah, like I say, unfinished things in the DLC. Does that mean that they are unfinished in that they are going to be finished at a later date and we're going to get a free update patch or are they unfinished and they're just going to stay that way? We know that we're getting a free update patch on the 11th of January, which is the new Pichoran event. Um, that is obviously dropping, like I say, for free. But are we going to get another free update patch after that? Maybe on around Pokemon Day. We have had a free update patch for Legends Arceus in the past where they introduced like massive mass outbreaks and alpha outbreaks, stuff like that. Um, so potentially we could get a free update after, you know, the 11th of January on Pokemon Day. And that includes these items. And then that also includes the PKX Lite feature as well. Because obviously, if you don't know what we're talking about with the PK Hex Life feature, Riddler Q, who's of course one of the leakers in the community, said that for a while we were going to get this PK Hex Life feature. And they went into detail about it as well with like IVs and stuff like that. But as we all know, we've not had a PK Hex Life feature in the Indigo Disc. I think it's very unlikely that we're going to be getting a PK Hex Life feature and these two items in the Pichurant event. I feel like that's just going to be like an hour long storyline and then we catch the mythical Pokemon at the end. I, I can't see an extra gameplay feature being included in that. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to wait for like Riddler Koo to kind of talk about this PKX Live feature um, and actually give us more information about it because it definitely has hurt his credibility 100% um, because like I say, he's spoken about this a lot in the past. So hopefully he sheds some light on that situation soon. But yeah, with these two items, we originally thought that once we got information about these new battle states for Koridan and Maridan, that they were potentially going to be used for those because we saw those battle, like we saw those battle states in the data mines. We also saw the Chinese Riddler, who isn't Riddler Koo, a different Riddler, like a well, a different leaker, should I say, a Chinese leaker, on the forums say that like loads of other stuff that they got correct. They also said there were going to be battle states for Koridan and Maridan. And as we all know, we didn't get battle states for Koridan and Maridan, but he got everything else right. So potentially these could have been used for like some sort of new kind of form or something, but that was all scrapped. And then it's also now come to light that those battle states were actually uh, new moves uh, for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's Indigo Disc DLC. So we have Jade here saying, wait a second, was the quirky laser battle state, which again, we thought potentially could have been for Maridon, because obviously laser is the futuristic Pokemon. Uh, the battle state data mine months ago actually fickle beam. And then super electric cannon was electro shot then. Um, so that obviously has been uh, now confirmed because we have Jade also saying, I checked the Japanese name and yeah, it literally was Fickle Beam all along and not a Koridon form. Battle State probably refers to whether Fickle Beam will do extra damage or not. So Fickle Beam is a move that can be used by Hydrapple. So Fickle Beam inflicts damage. There's a 30% chance that this move's base power doubles from 80 to 160. The average base power is 104. So that is most likely what the Battle State is referring to. But yeah, it has now been confirmed that they are not actually getting battle stakes that was just uh reading the data mines wrong and again even though we we did read the data mines wrong we did also have that leaker come out and say that they were going to get battle stakes so who knows maybe it was scrapped i i generally don't know but you know they, they have been right about everything riddler Koo has been right about everything but they were both wrong about the battle stakes and this pk hex light feature so it's going to be interesting what um these are used for if they are used for anything we have light here kind of 
expecting them to potentially be used for these new Generation 5 remakes or Black and White 3 games or Legends Curum or whatever that we might be seeing next year. I, I think this is highly unlikely. I don't know why they would have put this in Scarlet and Violet's base game if it was just an item that was going to be used in potential future games. I know we've had items in the past that have been for future potential games. Uh, we obviously have the strange souvenir that was found in X and Y. Uh, the player is given the strange souvenir by a mysterious NPC who hints it from an unrevealed region. This region was later revealed to be Alola. So yeah, this strange souvenir was obviously given to us by this NPC, but it's a little bit of a different situation because he actually hints that it's from a different region and that was also an event in the game, whereas these are not event items in the game. These have just been dated mines and have actual item images the key items and stuff like that so i don't think it's going to be really towards a potential like uh you know the, the gen 5 remakes like this is obviously for uh reshi round this is for zekrom but again i think that's very very unlikely i just don't know why they would include that in base scarlet and violet if it was for a game that was coming out like two years late i, I don't really get the point of that um especially because they've been, they've been data mined as well maybe if it was in like a science lab or something and they were like oh this is from the unova region like then fair play you know it, like if they were in the indigo disc and someone was using these rocks and they were like oh i'm just kind of taking a look at these rocks people found them in unova region like that no, yeah fair play then that would be very likely they would be used for for those two dragon types but again very very unlikely what are your thoughts on these unused items though? what do you think they were potentially going to be used for do you think they will still be used in like a future free update or something like that let me know your thoughts on it um it's a bit unfortunate because it just kind of it gave us hope that we were going to get like new forms of pokemon stuff like that but yeah unfortunately was uh, was not the case moving on though we do also have this post from like talking about uh, az's flow it's a really really cool theory um and also well it's, it's not really much of a theory i mean it kind of is but at the same time it, it just kind of it, it gives us a question that is also unanswered so it's about az's eternal flow at which I thought potentially could have been a Paradox Pokemon um, that we were going to get in this game and it would have come full circle when we were finally going to be able to get these 10 years later, a decade later after Eternal Flow was revealed. But in the time skip that AZ was studying to create the ultimate weapon, it is most likely that he was in Area Zero. As you can see at the foot of this tree, there is a Herba Mystica. So this is the, the tree that he's talking about, um, which again, I, I don't see the point of really putting this in the trailer they, they put this tree in the trailer in the way that it was going to be really important and that it was going to have some sort of significance to the story it literally just doesn't it's just on its own in a random room and it has no, like you can't even click on it like it, yeah it has herb mystica at the bottom of it but it is literally just there like i thought it was going to be like the source of terapagos's life or something like that i thought it was gonna be really interesting the way they put that in the trailer um, but yeah, literally unused completely. So maybe it was supposed to be used for something. Who knows? Um, but could that have been a reference to his Floet? Did the ultimate weapon that was created thanks to terrestrial energy and took reference to Glamora? Obviously massive kind of uh, reference to Glamora with the way this ultimate weapon is. And of course, Glamora, Glamora is a massive kind of Pokemon in Area Zero. This game just left us more questions than answers. So yeah, it's unlikely that, you know, it is going to be related to Eternal Floet. But it would have been cool. It would have been a way to link the regions together. They obviously are very, very close as well, being Kalos uh, and Paldea. They're really, really close together. So yeah, it would have been a really cool way to, to like say, link it all. But unfortunately, uh, doesn't look like it is going to be the case. And then finishing things off, uh, just a little bit more information about these potential uh legendaries now for the paradox forms maybe they are supposed to be labeled as legendaries we have so right here saying i saw this post going around and it made me think are the paradox swords and paradox be uh, paradox beast legendary pokemon because obviously coridon and moridon are paradoxes but they're also legendary pokemon so could it have been the same for these um it's just kind of classification things really but i never thought that they were but just regular paradox pokemon with good stats they have similar BSTs to Iron Valiant and Roaring Moon, so by that logic, are those two legendaries too? I realize that with this high of a BST of VGC, they might as well be considered legendary status, but I just wonder if these trios are officially classified as legendaries or not. Uh, what do you think? So, yeah, I mean, it's just a classification thing at the moment. Like, some people care and some people don't care, like, whether you classify Pokemon as what they are, because there's so many classifications now, like legendaries, mythicals, paradoxes, ultra beasts, yada, yada, yada. There's so many different things to think about now, and it just feels like we're getting more and more every year, because obviously we have regional forms now, we have the convergent species or whatever they're called. I don't even know. There just seems to be more and more classifications and it's just getting more and more like difficult to remember every single thing. And some people like to say get really annoyed if you uh, classify them wrong and stuff. But either way, it looks like we're just going to be getting more and more classifications down the line. But yeah, these potentially could be legendaries and paradoxes or just paradoxes. doesn't really matter to me, but you know, there's one of those. But either way, that is going to be everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, 
please do consider hitting the like button down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. It does really help out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on everything we covered today. What do you uh, think about these unused items? Do you think they will be used in like a free update down the line? I mean, it could be used for the Pachuran event on the 11th of January, very unlikely. Um, but uh, I mean, in fact, I know they're not because obviously it's been date like that's actually been leaked and been um, videoed and stuff. And it doesn't, I mean, I've not seen it, but no one's spoken about this uh, item for that. So yeah, it wouldn't be used for that regardless. But either way, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're brand new. Ring the notification bell for daily Pokemon content. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.